7.02, so let's get started. And for those listening or watching in the future, there are 11 individuals in attendance at the meeting right now. Um, and I just want to pull up a couple of things right here on my... Okay. So there's a single item on our agenda for this evening, and that is to discuss the paper streets issue. Um, we do have an opportunity for public comment, and I will note that we did receive a few emails, not, not a large number, but um, a fair number of emails before the evening. But if there's anyone here who wishes to comment, we will open the public comment period. Um, it's generally limited to 15 minutes, about three minutes per person. We'll just try to stay within those guidelines, especially because I know that there is the vice presidential debate this evening, and I'm sure a number of individuals want to be able to watch that at nine o'clock. Um, so please do try to limit your comments. And you can use the raise hand feature on Zoom. Please identify yourself by name and address for the record. We can begin um, with Glenn, and Matt will authorize you to speak as you are recognized. So talking is permitted, Glenn, you can go ahead. Um, you may need to unmute yourself. I, I tried that. Have I done it? You yes, I, I, I'm sorry, Glenn. I, I tapped uh, just at the same time as you hit that. Uh, I tapped on mute, so I apologize for that brief delay. <laughs> we canceled each other out, Matt. <laughs> quickly. Sorry. Well, good evening. Uh, my name is Glenn Israel. I live on uh, Meadowview Lane here in Cape Elizabeth, and I'm an attorney with Bernstein Shore. Uh, I'm here tonight in that capacity. We represent some of the homeowners on Pilot Point Road whose backyards could be affected by the development of the paper street that's at issue here, uh, Surfside Avenue. And that street was created, as I'm sure you know, by the common law doctrine of incipient dedication because it was depicted on the subdivision plan for Shore Acres, which was recorded in 1911. The portion of the paper street that runs through my client's backyards was never developed or used because it wasn't needed for access to any of the subdivision lots and it doesn't go anywhere. The paper street has essentially been part of my client's backyards for over a hundred years. There have been lawns, gardens, fences, stairways, patios, decks, lawn furniture, and other personal items on that paper street for many years. Now, as I'm also sure you're aware, in 2017, when the town began to explore creating a recreational path on the paper street, my clients became concerned. And ultimately there was litigation that ended up in the law court. But the law court only decided one of the many legal issues that were before it. And that is whether the town had abandoned its rights to develop the paper street. The law court decided that those rights had not been abandoned and had not lapsed, but the scope of those rights and how those rights can be used has not been decided. The law court determined that those issues were not ripe because the town had not announced or undertaken any concrete plans to accept or develop the paper street. If the town moves forward now, with those plans to accept or develop the street. All of those issues are going to become ripe and will most likely become the subject of additional litigation. Pursuant to the law court's ruling, the town has until 2037 to decide what, if anything, to do about the paper street. There's plenty of time to carefully consider the options to engage in discussions with all the stakeholders. And this is not a simple process. The town has to consider which portions, if any, of that paper street to accept and improve. What those improvements might look like, what the cost of those improvements would be, and importantly, what the related future maintenance obligations would be created by acceptance or improvement of the paper street. And all of those decisions are gonna be subject to public scrutiny and challenge by the various stakeholders as they should be. Now is not the time to create that sort of additional controversy and incur additional litigation expenses simply because a small but vocal group is pressing its interest in establishing public access 
to what has historically been my client's backyards for over 100 years. There are many more important issues facing this council at this moment, and there's plenty of time to address the Paper Street issue at some point between now and 2037. Thank you for listening to my comments. Thank you. Um, Jim, you are up next. All right, can you hear me? Hello? No, not yet. You can hear me, okay. <laughs> yes, coming through clear, Jim, sorry. <laughs> hey, thank you, this is Jim Mora, 5 Wombeck Road. Accepting Oceanfront Paper Street should be brought to the next town council meeting to close this issue the town council has been discussing for many years. Accepting these paper streets provide public benefit now and for future generations. COVID-19 has shown us many Cape Elizabeth residents use the town's open spaces. Increasing town's open space by accepting these paper streets helps spread out usage to minimize any impact on any one open space. Accepting paper streets in the middle of a pandemic is okay. From the July 24th court decision, any pot potential legal uh, excuse me, any potential uh, legal issues do not occur until, quote, such time as the town actually accepts and takes concrete steps towards developing the pilot point section, unquote. This means accepting oceanfront paper streets does not result in potential legal issues. The town has to take concrete steps towards developing the paper street. Concrete steps towards developing these paper streets could be delayed until mid-2021 when this pandemic is expected to subside. Thank you for letting me speak. Thank you, Jim. Um, Richard, you are next. Thank you very much. Uh, can everybody hear me? Coming through perfect. Uh, my name is Richard Nick Bryant and I live at 55 Spurwink Avenue in Cape Elizabeth. Um, first off, I want to thank the council for bringing this to a workshop, and I urge the council to move forward at their next council meeting to address acceptance of the paper streets. A few things I do want to make clear <clears throat> that um, the history of this uh, controversy over the paper streets is one that, um, that has been a little checkered, I think, on all sides. My Sincere hope is that when the town council acts to accept the streets and to protect and preserve and enhance these important public rights, that they do so in a way which is as <clears throat> amenable as possible to the uh, immediate abutters. I know that uh, Mr. Israel, Attorney Israel, uh, represents at least one of the abutters, um, and he's right that his client ought to be consulted and ought to be brought into the process, and I urge the town to do that. However, he made a couple statements which I think I would take issue with and want the council to be aware of. One is that he indicated these streets had never been used. And that's not true with respect to any number of the, I forget how many it is, 180 or something lots <clears throat> within Shore Acres who actually have deeded rights over these very paper streets. And those individual abutters have used that uh, paper street um, for decades. That was an issue in litigation several years before the most recent litigation. Um, and there's plenty of documentation of that. Um, he also suggested that it's simply a small but vocal group that wants acceptance of these streets. And I don't think that's true. And I think you just have to look back at the history of this council over the past few years to see that there's been very broad public support in the forms of petitions in support of a successful ordinance initiative um, and in attendance at council meetings and communications to the council to make clear that this is a townwide interest in preserving public access to shoreline. So I disagree with Mr. Israel's uh, characterization of the, the movement behind people who are urging you to accept these streets. He also suggests we can wait. You've got till 2037. He's right that legally speaking, the town's rights extend to that period. But I think it's really important that the town act now while we have the momentum. <clears throat> if we defer accepting the streets and defer actually putting in a public path on those streets, then we're deferring the benefit to the public of those streets and for no discernible benefit. 
Secondly, with regard to litigation, although Mr. Israel certainly is right that, that once the town starts to um, act on its acceptance and establish a path and take some concrete steps, as Mr. Mora pointed out, his client will have the opportunity to challenge that if he thinks that his arguments that were deemed unripe in, unripe in the current lawsuit um, might prevail. I personally think that, that that is a much weaker argument to make than the original position they took uh, on which they were defeated, but that's his call to make. The town has already invested an enormous amount of energy and time and money in reviewing these, pub, these paper streets, determining which ones had value going forward, and in defending those rights in court. And they did that at the behest of the public, because there was a, clearly a public outcry to make sure that public rights were protected here appropriately. Uh, so at the end of the day, I think Mr. Moore is right. I think we should accept the public streets now. I think we should have a plan that incorporates the views of the immediate abutters to make sure that whatever public uh, access is provided there is least disruptive to abutters, but I think we should do it now and move forward with it. Um, thank you very much for all your attention. Thank you. George, you are next. Here, there we go. Thank you for giving me permission to unmute myself. <laughs> um, we have been using this particular property since 1964. Um, the McMullins, the Legiers, um, all the people that formerly occupied these houses of the abutters um, were welcomed us down there and told us that this was there for our use. It was, they knew it was public. It's um, not only did we have, do we have deeded rights to it, but we actually executed a deed before the neighbors on the gravel portion got their, um, they bought the underlying fee. But before they did that, we have a deed that says we have the right to continue to use it and they can't, you know, stop us driving and all that other stuff. Um, we've worked hard for a long time to make this happen as a reality and to share it not only with our neighbors, but with the rest of Cape Elizabeth. It's a beautiful view. You have two lights down there, you have the ships coming by, the lobster boats in the harbor, and the, the harbor out in the ocean there. Um, and we need access to the, um, the water. We don't wanna have what happened in Broad Cove where people are going, they own up to the low tide line, so you can't even sit out on the beach down there. Here, when the town takes this over, the neighbors will be able to go down and relax and enjoy the view and it's not going to be an issue. Because the road, because the street goes nowhere, supposedly anyways, it goes, makes a nice loop, there's not going to be a lot of parking. There's not going to be a lot of people coming from other parts of Cape Elizabeth. Or perhaps initially when they go to see what it is, but basically the people that will use it will be walkers, um, joggers, um, people who want to see the ocean, go down and fish. We had in our case that, that the Chatmuses forced us into because they tried to slip it in under the wire, but they forced us into court. In there, the judge said, the town has the right to accept the paper streets. So that's, they've already decided that you have the right to do it. Just because it generates a few of these grabby neighbors who wanna take away this access from the rest of us, that's, you know, I'm sorry, but we've been at this a long time trying to protect this. And they knew it when they bought the property that it was there. They just figured they could get it. And that's wrong. I hope you guys will have the same forward looking and, and preservation views that we had when we took Fort Williams, because that was a potential go to the developer too. And we were able to say, no, Let's keep it for the townspeople and look what a boon that has turned out to be. That is a wonderful resource that is, is just irreplaceable. This is yet another one. Coastline is limited. I hope you'll accept this the paper streets and put in a path. Actually, we put in most of the path already just <laughs> over the years using it. But anyways, thank you very much. Thank you. 
Um, so we now have 17 attendees and I don't see any additional hands raised. Ah, um, one more. Diraj? You may just need to unmute oh. yourself. Oh, Oops, Matt sorry. Uh, can you guys hear me? Perfect. Oh, yeah. Uh, hi, my name is Diraj. Uh, I'm a resident of 2920 at Shore Acres. Um, so uh, we walk on Surfside Avenue, you know, almost every day and enjoy the beautiful ocean views. Um, I think it would be great to develop the Paper Street as a trail. Um, I strongly support the usage of Paper Street as a trail system, um, you know, for generations to come. That's all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so it has been about 15 minutes. Um, so if there's no one else who wishes to comment, we can close the public comment period. Okay. Um, and just jump right in. Um, so I thought a, a nice way to start to sort of narrow the direction that we're going in might be to just generally just take a poll first about some different options um, and then we can sort of hammer out, you know, where we're headed. But um, could I just get a quick show of hands of who as of right now favors just accepting the streets? Um, Zoom or otherwise, Penny, I know you're hindered by that. When you, when you say accepting, do you mean as a public way or as a walking trail? Um, I, well, I wanted to start with just accepting as the first question and then get into the, the details, but accepting. So I'm, I'm in the accepting camp. So we have four and a, and a hand wiggle from Jeremy. Okay. Um, so now on to that next question, um, accepting as a walking trail. Um, okay, so we have Jeremy, Penny, and myself, and then um, Valerie and Chris. Public way. Public way. Same for you, Valerie. Um, I'd like to hear more. Uh, I'm open to the public way or walking trail. My, my concern, and I'll um, just say it right now, is that um, it feels like it might be a little too soon based on what our um, legal counsel advised us. So I'm just kind of curious if we need to speak with our legal counsel again, or if um, everyone is open to um, moving forward with our counsel's advice. So my next sort of poll question um, was going to be, who is in favor of not accepting at the moment, but expressing an, an intent to accept at some future date after further consultation with the, with the council, exploring you know, what the options are, I know that that is an option for us to, to issue some sort of statement. So who would be in favor of that? Can I, can I make a brief comment? Yes. Um, <clears throat> so I appreciate the direction you're going here and uh, we can continue to go that way. Um, but a lot of these um, points uh, require some nuanced discussion uh, and some things to be fleshed out, like why walking trail versus public way? What, it, one point was made if we go with a public uh, with it and that's not to say a public uh, a walking trail isn't a public way because arguably a walking trail is a subset of a public way. So just to be clear, and I also don't speak for the council when I say it's in any way not, um, but a full a public way in the sense of what's contemplated under our, our ordinance. Uh, the point was made of like, oh, the town would have to explore like what's the ongoing costs and the construction, all that other stuff. So like, what, what is entailed if we were to get a public way? What would we have to build? Would we have to pave it? Could it be, uh, uh, could it be the public way itself literally be a dirt path that people walk on? There, there are all these other issues that we kind of have to discuss, I think, in order for us to kind of figure out what are we comfortable with, what aren't we? And as to the delaying, 
I, I think it's there to me, I just take devil's advocate. One could argue that this council is the one that um, no council can bind a future council. I think that's a fundamental concept in democracy is no legislature can bind a future legislature. And if that's the case, if this council said, oh, we're not taking action right now, and therefore the issue isn't, it was concluded the issue isn't ripe, who's to, who's to say that the fact that we said we're not taking action doesn't mean that a new council with a different town councilors that would be sworn in in two months wouldn't change its opinion and go a different direction. So there, there's things like that at play also as to timing. Uh, with that, I'm going to shut up now. So I just, just to clarify, I'm not intending to close the discussion. I just didn't want to start down a path if that was a path that most people did not support. Um, I want to start with the thing that we're, we're finding the most consensus on and then kind of go from there. Um, yes, Penny. Um, what I, the way that I look at it is my uh, ultimate goal is acceptance. And so when you ask the question regarding where are you relative to acceptance, my answer is yes. The, um, the process to get there is, um, and I think as, as Chris alluded to, is a set of steps. Um, what I would ideally in uh, my world love to see is that um, acceptance happens uh, uh, in some way uh, that what we do is we look at um, how might we um, how might we proceed? What are the steps to get there? Because we've done a lot of work. We've had engineers, we've had conservation commission, we've had all of this work done. And I think we need to say, how do we resurrect that? Bring it forward, um, look at it and determine if we have enough information in order to say, is it a, because I, I just see a simple path. It's nothing elaborate. Um, but my ultimate goal is acceptance. And so do we say to, uh, to, to Matt that we, we want to figure out how, how to, at our next council meeting, look at how we begin that process of acceptance and and talk to our council about what are the key things that we need to consider in any sort of um, statement about proceeding toward acceptance. My goal is to move it forward as quickly as we can. I think we've taken this issue for what, three, four years? I think it's time to just do something. So that's kind of where I come from. Okay. Um, so I don't mean to call you out, Jamie and Caitlin, but I'm just curious whether either of you have any input that um, since you weren't in favor of either of the proposed options, um, if you want to, if you don't <laughs> have to, if you don't want to talk right now, we can focus on other things, but just wanted to give you a chance. I, I'm just not in favor of accepting right now. And I think you need a better plan in place. And I also agree with Valerie. I thought we were going in another direction after speaking with our attorneys at our last meeting. So I think this is not anything what we discussed with them. So I'd like to hear more from them before we come up with a plan going forward. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll add a few things. I, I want to be clear that I'm not opposed to acceptance. Ultimately, I think, um, you know, we held an executive session, what was um, discussed and, and um, concluded, <clears throat> excuse me, in that executive session is uh, not something that we can get into a lot of detail. Um, and certainly, um, you know, don't want to risk, uh, you know, any legal arguments that we have, um, or potential future re legal arguments that we have. Um, but agreeing with Caitlin and, and what Valerie said, um, you, you know, I think, I think we were advised to proceed cautiously here. Um, and so, uh, you know, I, 
I think that the attorneys that have worked for us on this, as Penny stated, for um, quite some time and invested a lot of um, uh, time and energy and, and produced a successful outcome, um, you know, the same attorneys are, are still advising us to this point, and um, I'm, I'm not sure I see a reason to deviate from that advice, um, you know, immediately. Um, <clears throat> more so, and, and something that's not necessarily privileged from that discussion, um, I think the most um, responsible thing to do as a town is to try and engage the parties again, um, just at the very least see where people stand. And if no opinions have changed and no positions have moved or anything like that, then so be it. But it's never been the position of either the conservation committee or the town uh, writ large to um, sort of unilaterally act uh, without at least trying to engage stakeholders and trying to uh, particularly um, get uh, acquiescence from um, abutters um, so at a, at a minimum, I think that should be our starting point, just to take the temperature and take the pulse to see where everybody stands. Um, the community input has been heard and uh, I think responded to, um, but it's not been, um, you know, to, to this point, completely representative, I think, of, of all of the stakeholders, um, other than the attorney who spoke here first this evening. So, um, you know, up until Mr. Israel speaking earlier, you know, I, I don't, I'm certainly not aware of any position of anybody else, um, you know, that has sort of skin in this game. So, um, so again, <clears throat> that doesn't change my ultimate opinion uh, from where I think we, we are likely to get to. I just think that there's um, a number of steps that supersede um, just simply advancing to the next council meeting and moving um, an action to accept. <clears throat> Among those things, um, that I have question about is obviously the specific litigation that we were engaged in um, over the last number of years related to a certain section of Surfside Avenue. And we, I don't think we've come back around to um, ultimately what any decision on acceptance would be relative to the complete other side of Surfside Avenue, which um, runs to the, what, what's my direction there? I guess the north of of, um, of the what's been deemed the pilot point section. Um, so I think we just need to get a little bit more specific about that. And as was mentioned you know, here this evening, there's the complicating factor of private ownership of that. Um, so I, I, I'm not sure, um, and, and none of those property owners have been you know, party to any of the, legisl uh, the uh, litigation rather that, um, you know, that has led to this discussion. Um, I, I'm, I'm less concerned about um, the details uh, around the mechanics and engineering of creating the public way. I think that work has been done. I don't think that there's a need to go much deeper in that. I think, I think we have what we need. I'm more concerned about the process and trying to engage people. And, and if, if there has been no movement and no change, then we can act accordingly. But if there has been, then that might lead us in a slightly different direction. I don't know. So anyway, that's, um, where I stand on it tonight, so. Thanks, Jamie. Um, so from our executive session, what I kind of envisioned coming out of this evening would be not a definitive action, but just a direction that we're heading in. Um, and it sounds like from everyone that that general direction is interest and acceptance, but lay out some steps first. Um, we had discussed the possibility of formulating a statement around that. Um, it, it does get a little bit tricky because as Jamie pointed out, you know, there are these legal issues, there are the executive sessions that we are able to have with council, but there's also the public process. So in terms of moving forward to the next meeting. Um, I'm not sure if anyone has an idea about what, what that might look like. Jeremy, do you wanna jump in? Yeah, so I, I guess uh, one idea that I would propose, and I, I um, agree with both, what both Jamie and, and Penny have said, I don't think it makes a lot of sense to separate acceptance from, from you know, 
putting something on the ground um, because then we're, you know, essentially we've taken what should otherwise be a relatively straightforward thing and divided it into two fairly significant legal questions and I don't see any need to divide it into three. Um, but I, you know, I think one thing that we could do, and, I, and I, I've also, I have questions like Chris about, you know, the value of us making a statement that would bind a few, or, you know, and how that would bind a future council that hasn't been seated yet. I think one thing we could do at our next meeting is short of a statement, just simply refer this to the conservation committee who is likely going to be assisting with any of the on the ground work um, as, and also has experience working with abutters. In this case, hopefully the abutters would be amenable to working with them on sort of the details of siting and, and understanding how this would actually lay out on the ground in a way that it'd be amenable to everyone um, and, and task them with, you know, really just a, a lot of that work has been done already, but coming up with that plan and then I think we, we you know, my, my hope would be that the council would vote to accept it at a time when we are ready to implement that vision. Does that make sense? Valerie. I'm muted. Um, Valerie, go ahead. Can you hear me? I. I agree. I think that um, we need more engagement with stakeholders. This has to be, um, it's such a divisive issue right now. We need to bring people together. We need to hear what the, um, the abutters thoughts are, what all the stakeholders thoughts are and um, be in there. And maybe that's with, through the conservation committee. Maybe it's through, um, a mediator, someone else who's, uh, who does this type of work. So I think that's something we need to, um, to think about. And I think that really starting with the community engagement is where we need to begin. Chris? Yeah, I would, um, I just remind everyone that um, we tried a collaborative approach. We tried to bring together a mediator. We tried to pull all the stakeholders together and approach this in a reasonable way. And the response was the town was sued. Um, that doesn't mean we shouldn't try it again. Um, I, think it's the I think it's the ideal way to go forward is try to get everyone on the same page and come to a solution everyone agrees with. But bear in mind, we did try that approach and we were sued. Um, we won that lawsuit we won the lawsuit. <laughs> Lawsuits have consequences. Um, we're now in a situation where we need to make a decision. And I guess I have two questions from Matt. Um, so Matt, do you remember Astor Lane, the Astor Lane extension um, that we accepted the public way on like a year or two ago? Yes. All right, so we accepted that before it was actually finished construction. Is, is that right? Am I, do I recall that right? I think, uh, let's see. Um... You're talking about the, uh, I think it was conditional acceptance that we had done. Yeah, 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 so it wasn't actually finished yet. So there is precedent of the town accepting a public way before it's actually been fully built. I mean, obviously that one was in construction, but even if it was conditional, we had previously gone down that route of accepting a public way that hadn't been constructed. And the other was uh, this point of the maintaining the road. What would we have to bu uh, build? My recollection from the lawsuit was that the issue that was found to be uh, not yet ripe was whether we could accept it as a walking trail or whether, uh, and whether that constituted a public way or whether we had to accept it as contemplated in like 1911, 1914, whatever it was, I don't remember. Um, and, I, and I don't mean to in any way misconstrue any of the arguments and I, if anyone thinks I'm wrong, I'd encourage them to go look at the source documents. But it was, uh, it was a fe a fun, uh, uh, effectively like, I thought their argument was if, even if the town's right to accept hasn't lapsed, um, they can only accept it as a public way. So I'm left in the situation where, fine, we'll accept it as a public way, fine. Like period, end of story, this litigation's, the existing litigation's over, like just put this to bed. We accept it as a public way. So my question to you is, un, if we accept it as just a public way, period, full stop, end of story, no caveats, it's, we just accept it as a public way, 
Does that mean we have to build a 40 foot wide asphalt road running through these people's backyards or, or is, or could we go a different route after we've already accepted it and construct something different? If I, if I may, uh, Madam Chair, uh, Councilor Straw, that question is to me. Okay, I just want to confirm that. Uh, or if it was rhetorical, I wanted to or make sure. Or it's rhetorical. You don't know the answer. I don't want to put you on the spot, but. No, I, I, it, think it, I think it may be a, a better question for our, our, our legal counsel to, to answer. Uh, where they may, uh, you know, he could probably let you know about uh, prior cases that he'd been involved with as far as providing, uh, you know, if you do accept it as a street, is it perhaps something one could accept for use as pit for pedestrian purposes only if if you could qualify it along those lines maybe the question that uh, that uh, you know attorney parkinson could answer with uh, better authority than i do uh, at this point it's, it's not an intentional kick the can it's just uh, uh, it's uh okay. i think he's much better uh, read on the subject than i am although <laughs> i, I have said, I don't have, to have a merit badge or two on it at this point. <laughs> I don't. I, I I don't fault you at all for your answer. That's exactly. Yeah. Um, Jamie, go ahead. Um, I just wanted to respond to. I I absolutely agree that we we've, we've been down the road, and I'm not suggesting to travel it again. I I'm not looking to do you know some uh, full on mediation effort or anything like that. My only point was. We received the decision of the appeal in um, what was it, July, late July, early August, I think. And up until hearing from Attorney Israel just in the public comment tonight, I had certainly not heard, you know, anybody else um, from the abutting property owners, and maybe others on the council have that I'm not aware, or Matt has. But um, my only point was, at, at, at a minimum, I think it's worth reaching out just to see, okay, in light of where we stand now in, and the couple of decisions that have been rendered, um, you know, has that, has that moved anybody off of their previous positions or, or made anybody more amenable um, to working uh, cooperatively together? And if not, okay, th then we know that and we, we move on. I, I'm just saying that if, if it was me acting alone, um, you know, with a neighbor that I was in a disagreement with and we'd, you know, bend down the, the road of, of something like that, that I'd, I'd probably reach out and say, you know, hey, w where are we on this now? So, and whether that's through attorneys or not, I don't know what that actually, you know, looks like, but um, I think it's the responsible thing to do. <clears throat> and like I said, I, 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 I can't think of another example in town where we've embarked on um, something like this, impacting immediate uh, abutting property owners without at the very least attempting um, to work uh, cooperatively with folks uh, to the best of our ability, so. Caitlin? I was going to comment mostly on what Chris said, that, yeah, if we accept it as a public way, we've already been advised several times that we have to have a plan to make a public way, like a road. They specifically said that. That's an exactly your point about the second stem of the argument was that we weren't intending to accept it, so it was a moot point. They didn't argue that in court. So as soon as we start to go down the road of accepting and accepting, it triggers a whole nother lawsuit. That's what we are faced with. So my suggestion would be if you're going to have a plan, you need to get a plan together, what you want, a public way, a road, a path, get the conservation to put something together before we go down the road to accepting. Because once you hit accept, you're going to trigger a lawsuit. We're going to go back to court for years. But if we have something in place and they can visually see what you want to do, then you might have a better shot of avoiding that. But if you just accept and say, we're going to put a public way in, you're going to throw all these red flags up. We're going back to court. But if all you want is to put a path in that's four feet wide or whatever, then that's probably what you should present. So getting everybody together and getting everyone on the same page is probably far better plan, which is going to take a little longer and it's gonna cause the council to turn over, unfortunately, because we can't move anything faster than two months. So that's reality. But you just, all these questions that you are asking have been answered and answered over the last 10, 
how many years have we been doing this? So yes, we can go back into another session with the attorney and we can ask him the same questions we've asked him already, but they're not gonna change, that's all. Um, I'm not sure whether Penny or Chris had a hand up first. Um, Penny, go ahead and then Chris. Okay, I, I guess what I, what I hear um, most people saying um, is that it appears that we have a similar objective, that same objective, which is to accept. That's the goal. Um, how we get there is where we are at this point in time. I don't disagree with um, uh, Jamie that um, reach out and see if they, uh, the, um, the butters want to have a discussion first and then see if they want to participate in the solution or the plan, what it will be, um, a path or public way or whatever. Um, if they don't want to participate in the creation of that, then we head down that path, no pun intended, um, ourselves, pulling from all the previous documentation that we have and probably engaging the um, Conservation Commission with the ultimate objective of going toward uh, acceptance with here's what it's going to look like. Um, and that as Caitlin said, will take several months, but it appears that that's what I hear people saying. Um, Chris, did you want to follow up on some of that? Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I fundamentally at, at a core level agree with everything that Jamie and um, Caitlin have said. Um, but I guess I start at the point that from, um, how should I phrase this? Um, if we have the ability to accept, let, let's, let's say, and again, not a, a majority of us still haven't even said that we want a walking path. Uh, maybe I want a commercial boat launch there. In fact, I think I do want a co commercial boat launch. I'd like to see a commercial boat launch put in uh, if we're permitted to do so. Uh, to the extent something like that is, uh, in, and obviously I'm speaking facetiously here, uh, so, but if uh, something like that is permitted under the state shoreland zoning ordinances such that, oh, suddenly we are allowed to put in a big 40 foot wide asphalt road because it's serving a commercial boat launch. Uh, my point is, if we have the ability to make a, if we have a wide latitude with what we would be permitted to do, uh, if we put in a, a, a period full stop public way, no caveats, it, and then there'd be no basis and if their entire complaint, if their entire issue that they've raised is, well, you might be able to put in a road, but you can't put in a walking path. I'm like, fine, we'll put in a road. At moment you, in the moment we go forward and say, hey, we're putting in a road, you know what? I bet they'll come to us and say, yeah, yeah, yeah that, that walking path, that actually sounds pretty good right now. So why lead off with, yeah, let's put in a walking path. I mean, that's the collaborative approach. We want that approach if that's what you guys want. But I mean, why not lead with our stronger us argument of we're just going to accept it as a public way. And if you want to come to a collaborative agreement with us where we can all just reach an agreement and act like adults here and just do something that isn't going to cause all this conflict in the neighborhood, like, let's just put an end to this. And if they're, if what they're looking at is, well, they might put in a commercial boat launch for the wet team because they need emergency access and there's no actual town boat launch because Crescent Beach is actually on state land. Ooh, uh, they might say, yeah, hey, that walking path looks pretty good. So, and again, um, who knows? And uh, again, my time on the council ends <laughs> very shortly. So my opinion is not gonna matter. This is just my last chance to say anything. That's it. Um, we don't have to take any big action at the next meeting, and it does sound like the consensus is more towards smaller steps. So we could just, you know, for our next meeting, start with something like, I don't know if it would be who we'd be authorizing discussions, but, you know, we could start by authorizing those discussions with the abutters. Um, as a first step and then plan to reconvene with council after that to 
see um, first off what, what the abutters might be amenable to, and secondly, to discuss with council um, if they are not in agreement with any sort of plan to accept, then revisit you know, potential consequences of various actions. And it sounds like that kind of might be the direction that we need to head in. Jeremy? Um, I, I'm just curious, Matt, do you have a, a, a thought or recommendation on who we might task with that reasonably? Well, uh, I, it may be advantageous at this point, as Mr. Israel was here this evening, to uh, have our, our attorney uh, speak with Mr. Israel to see if, the, if that is something that his clients are amenable to uh, opening discussions on and uh, see, see where that direction goes. And then you can, you can probably get a pretty quick temperature read back fairly quick. And then from there, uh, I would say council or conservation committee would be the avenue you'd want to pursue uh, to do that as far as uh, uh, working or trying to come through that ultimately would have to come back to the council if there was a negotiated agreement. And it ultimately comes back to the council because you end up having to perform the acceptance or uh, some form of that. So uh, I probably, but I would probably start with having legal counsel reach out to theirs. So I think they have a good relationship and uh, I think it would be a, it may be money well spent. So what do people think about, you know, that being the thing that we send out of this workshop to our next meeting is um, authorizing council to begin those discussions and then planning to reconvene at a later date. I think there's real value in um, having a different council than our present council make the, make uh, the decision. Um, and that's not just because I'm trying to kick the can down the road and not be involved in the decision. But I think, and, I, and all joking aside, because I realize this is a serious issue and um, uh, setting the facetious uh, attitude aside, uh, ideally, yeah, it's, we, we just need to work together with everyone and try to come up with a solution that everyone's happy with. And I understand the desire to take very quick action, decisive action because of the current council, the way it's constituted, uh, based on the fact that we're all intimately familiar with what's been going on at this point, rather than having turnover and having to bring everyone else up to speed. But the wisest course of action for me is to slow and steady, try to work this through with everyone. Yes, we re reached our hand out before and it kind of got slapped down, but let's just do it again. Let's try to get everyone on the same page. The, if everyone's in, on board, there's gonna be a whole lot less animosity in the long run. Try to have something that everyone agrees with move slowly. So yes, I agree with that approach. Well, it's also just, if I may jump in, it's also just a matter of risk management, right? So, you know, part of, part of our responsibility is to manage risk to the town. And if by some chance any position has changed, then any risk associated with, um, you know, quicker acceptance is significantly mitigated. Um, and so we just take that off the table. That, that's why my point is just, let's find out. And I'll be quite honest, I don't think anything's changed. And I, I, don't, I don't have any grand illusions that something has. But at a minimum, I think it's our responsibility to find that out. And if not, then we move on. It's a decision tree. You just keep going. And, you know, our, it's, you know, one thing the lawsuit has, uh, you know, clearly stated is that our rights remain protected and preserved. And so at this point, it's just a matter of, um, you know, going about the appropriate steps to advance a plan to the ultimate outcome. Um, but, you know, within that, there's an element of risk management to understand what, you know, what, um, you know, what the town might be up against or not uh, in any action that we take. And so I think we have to just be able to, you know, uh, fully consider that before, before moving on anything. That's all. So um, do we need to have any further discussion this evening or is everyone comfortable with adding that agenda item to next week's meeting and proceeding from there? Nodding. Okay. So I guess, yes, Matt. 
Madam Chairman, if, if I may, ju I just uh, need to ask a clarifying question. Uh, would you like, because as you know uh, well from uh, proofreading the uh, proposed agenda for next week, <laughs> a couple different versions, would uh, the direction the council would like me to place on there, I, I can obviously put the agenda item on for next week, would be to authorize uh, the, the, the town's attorney to uh, reach out to the uh, other parties' attorney uh, to test uh, to you know find some way to make do outreach to find what their appetite is towards uh, moving forward in a collaborative way, something along those lines. Uh, obviously, I'll, I'll sharpen it up and provide you the language of it for approval. But is that's is that what I'm taking? That's what I'm taking away from the council discussion. Uh, Jeremy. Um, that yes, that, that that's my intention. And the other thing, and I don't know if this needs to be specifically stated in the wording, but the other thing that I think might be helpful to do at this point too is um, recognize that it's not just the abutting property owners who have deeded legal rights to this. And I think that um, you know it would behoove us while we're exploring what the town should do to accept this white legal way that we're reaching out to all of the property owners who have legal rights, you know, including those deeded rights of access that other owners have, um, because they, they clearly have a legal interest in what happens as well. Chris? And again, I don't want to kick the can down the road, but, um, and if next, this upcoming one, so be it or whatnot, and obviously when turnover happens, turnover happens, but to the extent that two of us won't be on the town council soon, is there any chance of things whipsawing back the other way. And it's like, we keep giving the, we're giving all these people whiplash with the things keep flipping back and forth. Um, so it, it, it's, um, is there any, and again, I, it sounds like I'm kicking the can down the road. Is there any, any value of putting this instead on December just because then you have a new council coming in or is it just like, they're not going to be up to speed. Just do it now. Um, I guess I would turn on if, if without Valerie and myself, if the rest of you all, or like, yeah, let's just go with it now. It would be irrelevant. But otherwise, it's, I, I don't want to create a situation where things get flip-flopped um, come December. Jamie? Do we need to vote to, to do this? I, 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 I mean, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure there even needs to be an action other than the direction given the manager here. And, and I, I don't know if we're overcomplicating it. I don't even think a vote needs to happen, in my opinion. But We can't vote. So no, but it. we're talking about putting it on next week's agenda to vote to tell the attorneys to go talk. Like, I'm, I, I, don't, I don't think there needs to be a vote. I'm, no. I'm not clear that there needs to be a vote to authorize that action, but. Matt? Uh, I think I, I, would, I, I would share Councilor Garvin's opinion too. I've, I've definitely taken away and uh, if, I, if I haven't, I can always record the t uh, rewind the video to, to take that, but I can take the direction from council here that there's consensus to do that. And reach out to attorney Parkinson first thing in the morning to get that going. If that might expedite the process, or at least uh, get the process started sooner than waiting a week, then I think I think we'll be on. I think you're on solid ground to do that as well. And I can save the agenda item. Okay. I think that sounds good. The one thing that I want to clarify before we leave it, though, is um, Jeremy had raised whether we're reaching out to. Um, everyone with deeded access at this point or just the direct abutters. And I thought for the sake of simplicity, it might be best to just reach out to the abutters for now. And then next, um, Jamie. Yeah, I, I think this is, I, 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 I don't know how much more clear I can make it, but um, I, I think it's really just a matter of talking to the people that challenged us on this to see if there's any change in their position. And if there's not, then we know where they stand and we, move forward based on that knowledge. So the people that, um, you know, have other uh, stakeholder position in this and other equities uh, are not the ones uh, challenging us on, on the potential action that we're considering. So I don't, I, I get what you're saying, Jeremy, about eventually when it comes time to involving people about the actual implementation and execution of any anything. But all I'm talking about for the here and now is just the people that were opposed to us are they still rock solid, vehemently opposed to us? And if not, is there some wiggle room there? Is there movement? Is there some daylight to, um, you know, maybe uh, you know, see a light at the end of the tunnel? And 
if not, then we we continue, uh, you know, on another appropriate course of action. That's all. Matt. Matt Madam Chair, if I may, and, and if obviously if I have results or uh, or response prior to next week's meeting, I can obviously uh, report back out uh, very quickly as well during my manager's report uh, specifically to that. So if we hear one way or the other, I can report out what the status would be of that of that conversation as well. Valerie. Would this be something that we'd want to um, schedule an executive meeting for um, our for our November meeting? I wonder if that might make more sense once um, the new council has been sworn in, since there will be a lot of background information there that might be helpful to them. So maybe before December, and then that way our can um, meet with us in executive session. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yes, Matt. I mean, uh, speaking with Attorney Parkinson this afternoon, uh, he had already asked uh, to, to at least grab a, a half hour with uh, the new council as they came on board to bring them up to speed anyway. So that was, that was uh, in a sense, already in, in pencil on paper uh, to be scheduled for that period as well. So uh, thank you, Councilor Devereaux, for teeing that up. Okay, so it sounds like we've, we've reached the end of the road and um, if there's anything else, let's bring it up now, but otherwise we can adjourn for the evening. Sound good? Uh, Valerie? I would just like to thank everyone who has um, sent in emails to us. Um, we've received a lot of emails from people that uh, different, different people, different um, ideas and concerns. We have um, 18 attendees right now, and I just want to tell everyone how much I appreciate their input, and I think it's really important that we have your input. So and keep um, giving us your input on this issue. Thanks for noting that, and yes, thank you to everyone who's been participating. And I did note in an email to a constituent earlier that um, I really love the civic engagement in this town. So it's one thing I will miss. All right. Um, so I guess we're all set to adjourn. Thank you everyone for being here tonight and enjoy or enjoy the debate. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Have a good night. Night. <laughs>